A detective from the DeKalb County Sheriff's Office, Jeremy Taylor, met Lauren's family at the hospital. He says, well, I regret to inform you that your daughter did not make it. She got up in the night to use the restroom, and she fell off the cliff and drowned. Chase hit the floor. Jordy hit the floor. They're telling us this was an accident. I immediately blacked out because it was so many emotions. I kind of just stared at them for a second, not understanding what they had just said to me and feeling the silence in the room from her parents and his sister. We were trying to ask, how do you know it's the right person? Can we go see her? But Jeremy Taylor did not want me to go in there. He said, you don't need to look at her. It didn't take long for words to reach Lauren's friends. I was heartbroken. And I mean, I was numb at the same time. I'm sorry. The official report stated that Lauren fell off the cliff where she was camping and suffered a head injury and possibly drowned. She was drinking. You know, I believe police, maybe she did fall, hit her head and drown. But in the week following her daughter's death, Ryan Melanson, an off-duty officer who was on the scene when Lauren's body was found, was desperately trying to reach Cheryl. He called my office, and no one would give him my phone number because they wanted me to mourn or, you know, they just didn't want to bother me. But he found me on Facebook Messenger. After I learned that they've ruled her death as an accidental drowning, I wanted to talk with her mother about the case. There was definitely more to the story. There was way too many red flags going off at that point, and you can't turn a blind eye to something like this. In July 2015, 21-year-old Lauren A.G. went to a weekend wakeboarding competition. She camped out atop a cliff with friends from Friday and Saturday night. And on Sunday morning, the last day of the festival, Lauren was nowhere to be found. Then, around 4.30 that afternoon, her body was discovered floating in a cove. Ryan Melanson was an off-duty police officer from a nearby town who was at Wake Fest the weekend Lauren died. And he had information to share with her mother, Sherry, that called the official investigation into question. Chris Stout and Aaron Lilly are on my boat. And Chris said, you know, I'm just thinking about a way I can get that gun off your hip and get off this boat. And that's when Aaron looked at Chris and said, uh, just shut up. We're not talking without lawyers. Very strange. I don't know what went down on that lake, but something about this doesn't sit right with me. So it comes as no surprise to me, Sherry hired a private investigator by the name of Sheila Waisaki. About to meet up with her to see what she was able to uncover over these past few years. Once again, thank you for doing this, taking the time to meet with me. Um, when you first got this case, what did you see and what began to show you some red flags? Jeremy Taylor was the detective and has one paragraph in his incident report on a case where a girl was found dead. That's not a death investigation. It's barely a traffic report. And on a crime scene, every time you walk in, it's a homicide until you prove otherwise. So I did the work that should have been done. So you start taking the case apart, basically. Where do you even begin? In order to figure out what happened to Lauren, start with the cliff and the campsite where the kids were. Something about this doesn't sit right with me. Someone knows something, and whatever they know doesn't line up with the story that police have told the public and the family. There's a possibility that Lauren's death could have been an accident, but nothing I've looked at lead me to that conclusion. All right, how you doing? Doing well, thank you. Forensic scientist Mark Gillespie was hired by Sherry's private investigator, Sheila Wysock, to review the original autopsy report and crime scene photos for potential errors or inconsistencies. And after visiting the campsite with Detective Johnson, I've got a couple of new questions I'm hoping he can answer. Let's start with the possible drowning. Is it one of those things where it's black or white, either she drowned or she didn't? It only takes a very small 
amount of water to actually die from, uh, to, to drown. But that water is not going to go into your lungs predominantly. It's going to go into your stomach. In her particular case, there, there was no water in her stomach, which tells me that I, I really don't think she, she drowned. Was there anything that you learned that could tell you what may have happened to Lauren? Her injuries were nothing that you would expect to see from someone falling 40 to 50 feet, landing on a rocky, steep incline and rolling into the water. She would have had severe road rash. She would have had severe bruising, cutting, scrapes, you know, contusions, abrasions, lacerations. Yeah, the abrasions you saw weren't consistent with the fall from a cliff. Absolutely not. And her clothing would have been ripped, torn. Her clothes were pristine. Her, it looks like her clothing was just taken out of a drawer and put on. To me, that was a telltale sign that pieces of the puzzle just aren't matching up.